Hey, Survivor. Welcome to episode 49 of the Vibrant Survivor podcast. Today, I'm going to share some hoovering tactics that the narcissist may use after you've gone no contact. I know how painful, distressful, scary, and annoying it can be. That's why I've come up with eight possible scenarios, plus tips for standing 10 toes down. This isn't about triggering others. It's about helping you to triumph over trauma. So if you're ready to identify, navigate, and heal from this toxic behavior, grab a notebook and pen, and let's dig in. Hey, Survivor. Welcome to the Vibrant Survivor Podcast. Do you want to disconnect from a narcissistic or toxic situation and heal? Are you Googling how to identify a narcissist, narcissistic abuse, and boundaries? Are you feeling stressed and lonely while trying to avoid being sucked back in and lied to again? Hey, I'm Leslie. As a busy wife and mom, I fell for the lies and manipulations of narcissists. I wasted my time, talents, and money on users who kept moving the goalposts. I wanted real relationships and business opportunities and to enjoy life with my family. Instead, I struggled with anxiety, panic attacks, and insomnia, and I couldn't trust my body or anybody until I took a holistic approach to healing. In this podcast, you'll find tips for healthy living, trauma healing, and boundaries so that you'll have the freedom, confidence, and inner peace to respond, not react, after narcissistic abuse. Take a deep breath in, let it out slowly, and just relax. This time's for you. Hey, Survivor. Are you tired of feeling exhausted, stressed, lonely, and stuck in narcissistic relationships, and you just want closure and healing? I spent years rationalizing toxic relationships and dysfunctional environments in the name of community, connection, and career. As a result, I wasted my time, talents, and money on users who kept moving the goalposts. One of the worst was an alleged murderer who discarded me after I caught him lying, stopped helping him for free, and held my boundaries. Even though I dodged a bullet, I felt depressed, ashamed, and I doubted myself. I want you to know that you don't have to suffer in silence, feel alone, or crazy anymore. Come and experience the power of creating your own closure without the permission or participation of the narcissist. I've been no contact for over four years now, and I've grown personally and professionally. I have more clarity, stronger boundaries, I'm building a life and business that I've always wanted, and enjoying real relationships. I know you want to break patterns of getting into toxic relationships, even if you don't mean to. And it feels so good to disconnect from dysfunction, set and hold boundaries, provide closure for myself, and focus on self-care, and to empower my kids to do the same. Go to ClosureCoachingSession.com right now and get ready to heal after narcissistic abuse. So that's what that is. I've experienced narcissistic hoovering in various relationships, but I didn't always have language to describe who and what I was dealing with, let alone articulate my experience to other people. And even when I did share my experience, people who had healthy boundaries who were removed from the situation helped me to put things into perspective very quickly. I remember sitting on the sidelines next to a team mom on my daughter's soccer team at a game and sharing with her something that I had experienced at that time. And she just looked at me like, where do you meet these people? And I was like, oh. Once I got clarity on narcissism and the narcissistic abuse cycle, I was able to better navigate these toxic relationships and focus on my healing. Going no contact wasn't easy, but it was best for me. My relationships were non-romantic, which made it easier to disconnect from the narcissist and execute a drama-free exit. Now, your mileage may vary, and that's okay. Do the best you can with what you have and see if you can recognize these eight hoovering tactics in your relationships and stand 10 toes down after narcissistic abuse. Number one, hiding behind the help. Narcissists may use a family member, friend, colleague, or a partner in crime, literally, especially if they're more of a con artist or scammer type. And they will use these folks to test the waters with you, to gather intel about you, and to 
be a bigger bully. After all, they find strength and safety in numbers when launching this kind of an attack. In this situation, you can, if you're, if it's a phone call, you can hang up on the help or just leave the help hanging. That helps to dismantle the narcissist's efforts to suck you back in to the relationship for more abuse. Number two, blow up your phone using burner numbers. Narcissists may call you from all different area codes using Google voice numbers, which are quick and free, which are right up the narcissist's alley. This is to get you on the phone. It can also serve as a scare tactic to get you back under their control. It's kind of like I'm everywhere and nowhere and you can't find me and you never know where I'm going to be or what I'm going to do next. What you can do is let it go to voicemail and I can assure you that nine times out of 10, they won't leave one because the whole point was to get you on the phone to manipulate you in a direct conversation. Also, don't take phone calls from numbers that you don't recognize. If it doesn't pop up in your phone as someone that you already have as an established contact, let it go. Number three, stalk hoping to talk. Narcissists may show up at your home, your workplace, or some other place that you frequent. And the purpose of this is to try to re-engage you in hopes that they can suck you back into the relationship in order to get their needs met. You may, in this case, want to alert your trusted family, friends, neighbors, maybe even local authorities. Show them their picture. Let them know who they are and what you're dealing with so that those you trust can look out for you, have your back. Number four, Go fish using fake profiles. This could be an email or a contact form on your website, a direct message, or a comment on your social media if you're on social media. This allows the narcissist to stay hidden but strike up a conversation, maybe even offer an opportunity, dangle a carrot in front of you in hopes that you will take the bait and draw you in that way. Maybe even start a fight by picking at you or taking digs at you. You can block them, you can hide their comments, you can delete them and retreat to focus on your self-care. Number five, allude to filing suit. Narcissists may threaten to sue you and whether they follow through is another story. If they're presenting as covert, they may not just come straight out and say, I'm suing you. They may, they may suggest that they're going to do it like, oh, I guess we'll just see each other in court. Or if they're more overt, they may just straight up threaten you and say, I'm taking you to court. I'm suing you. Again, the follow through is another story. They may leave a voicemail for you with this message or they may text it to you. This is to instill fear, to get you to call them, maybe even ask them to leave you alone or stop it. It's Even though that's maybe more negative attention, it's still attention. They'll want to trigger a reaction, create drama. For some, it's entertainment. They think it's fun. You may want to seek legal counsel and watch and wait and see what happens. Focus on the now. Narcissists try their hardest to get you to focus out in the future and to anticipate or be fearful about or even sometimes get excited about something that is in the distance. It's really important to stay grounded in the now, in who you are and where you are and what's going on so that you don't get swept up in what may or may not happen in the future. You'll want to see if you actually get served by an attorney properly and also know who you're dealing with, 
Who are they? What's their background? That may be an opportunity to do a little research, do a little digging. Number six, contact your company. Narcissists may attempt to assassinate your character, make false claims and wild accusations about you, maybe even anonymously or more covertly uh, to your workplace. And this may be a way of retaliating. Maybe you've triggered abandonment issues that they have from something that has happened to them. Maybe you've caused a narcissistic injury. You have knocked them down several pegs. You've bruised their ego and they are trying to get back at you for the hurt that they're feeling. And in doing this contacting, they may try to get you fired, try to hit you where it hurts, get you in your pockets. This can also trigger a reaction in you, get you to reach out, say something to them, engage with them. But at the same time, they're threatening potentially your livelihood. And one of the best things that you can do is to is to establish a calm body and brain. It's hard to do anything, get anything accomplished when your body and brain are in a dysregulated state, you'll want to speak your truth humbly and vulnerably. You will find that a lot of people are able to see through this tactic because oftentimes it's so over the top and so extreme. Narcissists lack self-awareness, so they're, they're extreme in the way that they handle things. And very emotional and erratic and impulsive. And a lot of people will see through that. They may even apologize to you for having to endure this kind of behavior. Number seven, engage with an enemy. Narcissists may actively engage with someone for show, someone that they may not even really like or care about, or someone that they know that maybe you don't care for, or someone that they think might make you feel some kind of way, like jealous or upset. It's typically for show, it's fake, they don't really care about them. And the person who is being used in this situation, which is also a form of triangulation, is oftentimes unsuspecting, like they have no idea what's going on. This, again, is to trigger reaction, to create drama, Narcissists will find this kind of thing entertaining and even thrilling, like being able to pit two people against each other, especially if one of the people is someone that maybe they've talked badly about or they really don't like or maybe they're jealous of. It can be thrilling to get away with that. Let them have at it. Don't give it any energy. The other person, unfortunately, or fortunately, may need to learn a lesson in vetting people and really knowing who and what they're dealing with. But that's not your concern. You focus on your health and well-being. Number eight, profile posturing. The narcissist will often switch up their profile pictures on social media. And in doing so, they may place profile pictures of the two of you, or they may post a picture of themselves with someone that you knew, or someone entirely new. This could stir up memories, trigger an emotional reaction from you, pique your curiosity, or get you to reach out. You can block them, hide their content, delete them, focus on your self care and cultivating healthy relationships. There's often more to this story than the profile picture would suggest. The narcissist often lives an empty lifestyle, longing for the past, not happy with their current situation, or they're in their current situation, they may be scamming, manipulating, cheating the system up to no good that you don't even want to be a part of anyway. With the narcissist, Nothing is as it seems. There's always an angle for them to get a need met. 
you never know. And it may be best that you don't know because your priority should be you. Let's recap eight narcissistic hoovering tactics. Number one, hide behind the help. Number two, blow up your phone using burner numbers. Number three, stalk hoping to talk. Number four, going fishing using fake profiles. Number five, allude to filing suit. Number six, contact your company. Number seven, engage with an enemy. Number eight, profile posturing. Remember, regardless of the relationship or tactic the narcissist uses, hoovering sucks. If this podcast has helped you understand who and what you're dealing with, sharpen your discernment, and move forward on your healing journey, share it with another survivor. Help me help others by leaving a review for the show. And let's connect on social. Take a screenshot, share it in your IG stories, find and tag me at The Vibrant Survivor, and I'll share your post too. I look forward to connecting with you on IG and seeing you back here. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll meet you back here next week. Bye-bye.